He's an important player. I'll be here shortly. We're doing a collaborative reading. Just, uh, That's don't exciting. Get, don't get too drunk so that you can't read. <laughs> well, this beer is only... 12%? Okay. Oh, yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah, today's climbing reminded me a lot of last year. We climbed for a few hours, and then there was rain, and we ran away. Oh. If it makes you feel any better. Today was all rainy, all day. Oh. And so will tomorrow morning be. Yeah, that's the worst. Oh, wait, no, you're Fiona. What am I talking about? That's the best. Not when there's a beach that I would like to sit on. <laughs> you can sit on the beach in the rain. I don't see the you problem can, here. Yeah, but... Isn't really as good. Hey, Jesus, do you want do you want a small glass of this? Uh, I'll take a I take. want some. <laughs> hey, ask Fred if you want some too. I'll, I'll pour. Oh, I can just pour a little bit, and you guys can share. All right. It's a brandy barrel aged quad. So. Ooh. Your cool. little glass is so cute. <laughs> Next to a bigger glass. <laughs> Adorable. Chelsea, hello. How are you? Oh, I guess I can actually... Hey, what's up? I'm good. We're having a special... We're having a special what? I'm in Boulder, Colorado. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's right. Everyone's in Boulder. Except me. No. Well, I mean, like, I guess there's... Like Dan and yeah, what happened? Supposed to join. I'm not. I, uh, cool. I couldn't take. I, I can't take off that much time. I, I'm going to a wedding later this month, so I like. All right. I'm sorry. You're the maid of honor. No, it's it's my cousin's wedding. I'm doing a reading though. Should be good. So, it'll be great. Is this being recorded? It is. Okay. Time to censor yourself. <laughs> what? Is it time to censor yourself? Like, physically censor myself because I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> but I'll just. <laughs> you can open up Scoot and Doodle and you can write out whatever horrible things you wish to communicate. Okay. Oh, no. Like, I feel like all the horrible things I say on air will be, like, traced back to me one day. Yeah, that is oh, they will. What? They will. We oh, already, wow. we're working on algorithms for that already. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Yeah. Thanks, asshole. What do you think we do? <laughs> oh, God, data collection. Right. Yeah. That's organized the world's information. What do you think? Oh, it's really good. Yeah. I like this. This is a pretty good price, too. Yeah, I'd say better than Tony has got it here. It's some kind of here. It's a cool beer. What's it called? It's Sierra Nevada Ovila Quad. It's Randy Burley. Hello. How's everyone doing? Back in a green car, Hey, everybody. Hello, Chelsea. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hey, everybody. I am an O. Hello, my name. Sweet, we got people this time. Yeah. Hey. What a good story, too. And we've got a bunch of people here, but nobody's just here. Oh, my God. What the fuck is going on? Oh, Why is there so much echo? Is that from me? I think there's some more. So I think there's a lot of echo. I think. Good. Is the echo gone? Did I? Did four people in the middle of the day? Did they? I told them that. I thought Chelsea is totally you. I think they like stories. Chelsea, you're totally uh, echoing. I think I hear myself echoing on. Yeah, I wanted to meet you. are echoing everything. Sorry. Oh, 
<laughs> that made the most sense. Or else, I got the better. story today. So much better. Wait, does that mean we can't hear Chelsea at all anymore? <laughs> Say something, Chelsea. <laughs> no, no, she's mute. Did we? Sorry, did I interrupt the storytelling? Did you guys already start? No, we didn't start yet. No. Oh, okay. We never start until at least an hour after. Oh, yeah. So yeah, we're pretty good. The paper menagerie. That's right. Oh, I've been saving this one. It's a very special story. Can you change it to the paper menagerie? Maybe this one. No, no puns. I refuse. Fine. Yeah. It would be like fairies and furries. I might have to leave uh, oh, relatively early because I was asked to do something for work. And I don't know when that's going to happen, but I'm going to get pinged whenever it needs to happen. And I might have to leave. Sad face. Yeah. Mama knows you have to stand up for yourself. Don't get bullied by your boss. Oh, he's not even my boss. He's not even your boss. It's even worse. He's like... I guess he... Well, I don't know. I, I guess I assume anyone that can tell me what to do is my boss, but then there's like... I have like so many. Anyone higher rank than me can tell me what to do. Wait, who just left? I think that's Alex. Oh. Yeah. So you're in, you're in Boulder right now, right? That's right. Yeah. Wait, that's a couple days ago. Cool. Yeah, I can hear you still. Yeah, Alex is trying to communicate. You probably can't hear him. Is I Alex in Boulder too? Tell me said so you were coming out with a cool story. Sweet. Another tiny glass. <laughs> what? Well, that was the first glass. This is the second glass I poured. I have three of these tiny glasses in total. So you can juggle them. Yes! <laughs> with beer inside. I assume that's the goal. Correct. So you can take the bite of an apple just with beer. Yeah, like... Because that totally works. Yeah, you just have to flip them very I'm carefully. Gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Crazy. Yeah? The West Coast. Your clock never changed. Even my cell phone clock never changed. <laughs> What's wrong with all your gear? I don't know. I left my heart. In San Francisco. That, was, that was really bad. I don't know. Some old song that no one cares about. Hmm. Oh, anyway, I guess we're going to read a story now. I'm ready to... I thought we were waiting for Tony. Well, Tony said he might wander down. All right. So we're not impressed by Tony. I guess not. Well, let's at least give Minoj a second to get back. Uh, what a again. jerk. This is really good. Uh, he is. Should have bought a I'm case. I'm going to cook a burger, and I'm just going to mute myself so you don't hear me cooking a burger, but I will listen to you. Find it in California. Jesus, find some more in California. I will. And uh, send me some of them. I can't find any here. Well, maybe. Fuck. Right say. now it's kind of frozen, so we'll have to see how that turns out. Also find some almanac. I'll send you off with some beer, maybe. Excellent. I'll open beer here. How about that? <laughs> I'll open lots of hot beer. Can try it all. So I'll be sad once I leave. Mm. In like a continual supply. That's the key. I still got that 18% rum barrel aged coconut porter to open for people. Oh man. <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's pretty good. It's very desserty. We've had it before. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty recent day release. Is that Minoj? It was. Why is his back turned towards this? He's cooking a burger. <laughs> you can like criticize his cooking skills. Oh wait, if you click on this, like this is sh what's shown on the air, right? Yeah. Let's watch as Minoj, with his elbows tucked in nicely. Oh. Yeah, shimmy. Oh man, the, the, sh the shimmy burger making. This show is really getting started. Oh yeah. Who knows where are all the onions? What kind of burger is this? What? <laughs> the garlic? Come on, the barbecue sauce. That you were a pro. I don't know what that means. 
Yeah, let's see what's in the background of Fiona. Uh, all right, what do we got, Fiona? You gonna give a little shimmy for us? Yeah, shimmy. Oh. <laughs> Please move your scalp. Yeah, something. Oh. A shoulder roll. <laughs> all right, just that winning smile. That's all we all right, got. Let's see what Chelsea's got. You got a forehead. Oh man, nice forehead. <laughs> nice hipster glasses. Good choice. That Thanks. Pretty nice. Yeah, it's quality. I like that uh, that banister too. It's rustic. Yeah, I built it myself. <laughs> <laughs> are we waiting for Manoj to come back, or no? He's busy. Oh, okay. Are we reading then? Yeah, let's get started. All right, so this story is the Paper Menagerie, and it's really interesting because every year there's a series of awards given out for science fiction and fantasy works, and this is the first year that the three main awards have all been won by the same short story. Wow. And it's the Paper Menagerie. Holy crap. And it's been running for like 100 years. This is some short story. Yeah. Maybe I should like tell everyone to get down here. Ah, uh, they're they're horrible Philistines. It's hopeless. <sighs> Uncultured swine. Yep. Not even worth our time. Definitely not. Not even close. All right. So well, let's begin. Are, are people coming down? No, just random stopping. So this is the Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu. Liu. Uh, you are the Chinese guy. <laughs> You can tell me. And Di Wang will be inserting his wonderful Chinese knowledge as needed. Thank you for that. That was exciting. All right. One of my earliest memories starts with me sobbing. It's depressing. I refused to be soothed, no matter what mom and dad tried. Dad gave up and left the bedroom. But mom took me into the kitchen and sat me down at the breakfast table. Come, come, she said as she pulled a sheet of wrapping paper from on top of the fridge. For years, mom carefully sliced open the wrappings around Christmas gifts and saved them on top of the fridge in a thick stack. She set the paper down, plain side facing up, and began to fold it. I stopped crying and watched her, curious. She turned the paper over and folded it again. She pleated, packed, tucked, rolled, and twisted until the paper disappeared between her cupped hands. Then she lifted the folded up paper packet to her mouth and blew into it like a balloon. Ken! She said. Lao Hu! She put her hands down on the table and let go. A little paper tiger stood on the table, the size of two fists placed together. The skin of the tiger was the pattern on the wrapping paper. White background with red candy canes and green Christmas trees. I reached out to Mom's creation. Its tail twitched and it pounced playfully at my finger. Rawr! It growled. The sound somewhere between a cat and rustling newspapers. I laughed, startled, and stroked its back with an index finger. The paper tiger vibrated under my finger. Purring. Mom said. This is called origami. I didn't know this at the time, but Mom's kind was special. She breathed into them so that they shared her breath and thus moved with her life. This was her magic. Dad picked Mom out of a catalog. One time when I was in high school, I asked Dad about the details. He was trying to get me to speak to Mom again. He had signed up for the introduction service back in the spring of 1973. Flipping through the pages steadily, he had spent no more than a few seconds on each page until he saw the picture of Mom. I'd never seen this picture. Dad described it. Mom was sitting in a chair, her side to the camera, wearing a tight green silk shung sum. Her head was turned to the camera so that her long black hair was draped artfully over her chest and shoulders. She looked out at him with the eyes of a calm child. That was the last page of the catalog I saw. 
he said. The catalog said she was 18, loved to dance, and spoke English because she was from Hong Kong. None of these facts turned out to be true. He wrote to her, and the company passed their messages back and forth. Finally, he flew to Hong Kong to meet her. The people at the company had been writing her responses. She didn't know any English other than hello and goodbye. What kind of woman puts herself into a catalog so that she can be bought? The high school me thought I knew so much about everything. Contempt felt good, like wine. Instead of storming into the office <clears throat> to demand his money back, he paid a waitress at a hotel restaurant to translate for them. She would look at me, her eyes halfway between scared and hopeful, while I spoke. And when the girl began translating what I said, she'd start to smile slowly. He flew back to Connecticut and began to apply for the papers for her to come to him. I was born a year later, in the year of the tiger. At my request, Mom also made a goat, a deer, and a water buffalo out of wrapping paper. They would run around the living room while Lao Hu chased after them, growling. When he caught them, he would press down until the air went out of them, so they became just flat, folded up pieces of paper. I would then have to blow into them to reinflate them so they could run around some more. Sometimes the animals got into trouble. Once the water buffalo jumped into a dish of soy sauce on the table at dinner. He wanted to wallow like a real water buffalo. I picked him out quickly, but the capillary action had pulled the dark liquid high up into his legs. The soft, softened legs would not hold him, and he collapsed onto the table. I dried him out in the sun, but his legs became crooked after that, and he ran around with a limp. Mom eventually wrapped his legs in saran wrap so that he could wallow to his heart's content, just not the soy sauce. Also, Lao Hu liked to pout at sparrows when he and I played in the backyard. But one time, a cornered bird stuck back in desperation and tore his ear. He whimpered and winced as I held him and Mom patched his ears together with tape. He avoided birds after that. And then one day, I saw a TV documentary about sharks and asked Mom for one of my own. She made the shark, but he flapped about on the table unhappily. I filled the sink with water and put him in. He swam around and around happily. However, after a while, he became soggy and translucent and slowly sank to the bottom, the folds coming undone. I reached in to rescue him, and all I ended up with was a wet piece of paper. Lao Hu put his front paws together at the edge of the sink and rested his head on them. Eyes drooping, he made a low growl in his throat that made me feel guilty. Mom made a new shark for me, this time out of tinfoil. The shark lived happily in the large goldfish bowl. Lao Hu and I liked to sit next to the bowl to watch the tinfoil shark chasing the goldfish. Lao Hu sticking his face up against the bowl on the other side so that I saw his eyes magnified to the size of coffee cups staring at me from across the bowl. When I was ten, we moved to a new house across town. Two of the women neighbors came by to welcome us. Dad served them drinks and then apologized for having to run off to the utility company to straighten out the prior owner's bills. Make yourself at home. My wife doesn't speak much English, so don't think she's being rude for not talking to you. While I read in the dining room, Mom unpacked in the kitchen. The neighbors conversed in the living room, not trying to be particularly quiet. He seems like a normal enough man. Why did he do that? Something about the mixing never seems right. The child looks unfinished. Slanty eyes, white face. A little monster. Do you think he can speak English? The women hushed. After a while, they came into the dining room. Hello there. What's your name? Jack, I said. That doesn't sound very Chinesey. 
Mom came into the dining room then. She smiled at the women. The three of them stood in a triangle around me, smiling and nodding at each other, with nothing to say, until Dad came back. Mark, one of the neighborhood boys, came over with his Star Wars action figures. Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber lit up, and he could swing his arms and say, in a tinny voice, Use the Force! I didn't think the figure looked much like the real Obi-Wan at all. Together, we watched him repeat his performance five times at the coffee table. Can you do anything else? I asked. Mark was annoyed by my question. Look at all the details, he said. I looked at the details. I wasn't sure what I was supposed to say. Mark was disappointed by my response. Show me your toys. I didn't have any toys except my paper menagerie. I brought Lao Hu out from my bedroom. By then he was very worn, patched all over with tape and glue, evidence of the years of repairs Mom and I had done on him. He was no longer as nimble and sure-footed as before. I sat him down on the coffee table. I could hear the skittering steps of the other animals behind in the hallway, timidly peeking into the living room. Shalohu, I said, and stopped. I switched to English. This is Tiger. Cautiously, Lauhu strolled up and purred at Mark, sniffing his hands. Mark examined the Christmas wrap pattern of Lauhu's skin. That doesn't look like a tiger at all. Your mom makes toys for you from trash? I never thought of Lauhu as trash. But looking at him now, he was really just a piece of wrapping paper. Mark pushed Obi-Wan's head again. The lightsaber flashed. He moved his arms up and down. Use the force! Lao Hu turned and pounced, knocking the plastic figure off the table. It hit the floor and broke, and Obi-Wan's head rolled under the couch. Rawr! Lao Hu laughed. I joined him. Mark punched me hard. This was very expensive. You can't even find it in stores now. It probably costs more than what your dad paid for your mom. <laughs> I stumbled and fell to the floor. Lao Hu growled and leapt at Mark's face. Mark screamed, more out of fear and surprise than pain. Lao Hu was only made of paper after. Mark grabbed Lao Hu, and his snarl was choked off as Mark crumpled him in his hand and tore him in half. He balled up the two pieces of paper and threw them at me. Here's your stupid cheap Chinese garbage! After Mark left, left, I spent a long time trying, without success, to tape together the pieces, smooth out the paper, and follow the creases to refold Lao Hu. Slowly, the other animals came into the living room and gathered around us, me and the torn wrapping paper that used to be Lao Hu. My fight with Mark didn't end there. Mark was popular at school. I never want to think again about the two weeks that followed. I came home that Friday at the end of the two weeks. Mom asked. I said nothing and went to the bathroom. I looked into the mirror. I look nothing like her. Nothing. At dinner, I asked Dad. Do I have a chink face? Dad put down his chopsticks. Even though I had never told him what happened in school, he seemed to understand. He closed his eyes and rubbed the bridge of his nose. No, you don't. Mom looked at Dad, not understanding. She looked back at me. Sajo! English! Speak English! She cried. What happened? I pushed the chopsticks and the bowl before me away. Stir-fried green peppers with five-spice beef. We should eat American food. Dad tried to reason. A lot of families cook Chinese sometimes. We are not other families. I looked at him. 
other families don't have moms who don't belong. He looked away, and then he put a hand on Mom's shoulder. I'll get you a cookbook. Mom turned to me. Oh, sir. English! Speak English! Mom reached out to touch my forehead, feeling for my temperature. Fasola? I brushed her hand away. I'm fine! Speak English! I was shouting. Speak English to him, Dad said to Mom. You knew this was going to happen someday. What did you expect? Mom dropped her hands to her sides. She sat, looking from Dad to me and back to Dad again. She tried to speak, stopped, and tried again, and stopped again. You have to, Dad said. I've been too easy on you. Jack needs to fit in. Mom looked at him. If I say love, I feel here. She pointed to her lips. If I say I, I feel here. She put her hand over her heart. Dad shook his head. You are in America. Mom hunched down in her seat looking like the water buffalo when Mao Hu used to pounce on him and squeeze the air of life out of him. I want some real toys! Dad bought me a full set of Star Wars action figures. I gave the Obi-Wan Kenobi to Mark. I packed the paper menagerie in the large shoebox and put it under the bed. The next morning, the animals had escaped and taken over their old favorite spots in my room. I caught them all and put them back into the shoot box, taping the lid shut. But the animals made so much noise in the box that I finally shoved it into the corner of the attic as far away from my room as possible. If Mom spoke to me in Chinese, I refused to answer her. After a while, she tried to use more English, but her accent and broken sentences embarrassed me. I tried to correct her. Eventually, she stopped speaking altogether if I was around. Mom began to mime things if she needed to let me know something. She tried to hug me the way she saw American mothers do on TV. I thought her movements exaggerated, uncertain, ridiculous, graceless. She saw that I was annoyed and stopped. You shouldn't treat your mother that way, Dad said. But he couldn't look me in the eyes as he said it. Deep in his heart, he must have realized that it was a mistake to have tried to take a Chinese peasant girl and expect her to fit in in the suburbs of Connecticut. Mom learned to cook American style. I played video games and studied French. Every once in a while, I would see her at the kitchen table studying the plain side of a sheet of wrapping paper. Later, a new animal would appear on my nightstand and try to cuddle up to me. I caught them, squeezed them until the air went out of them, and then stuffed them away in the box in the attic. Mom finally stopped making the animals when I was in high school. By then her English was much better, but I was already at that age when I wasn't interested in what she had to say, whatever language she used. Sometimes, when I came home and saw her tiny body busily moving around in the kitchen, singing a song in Chinese to herself, it was hard for me to believe that she gave birth to me. We had nothing in common. She might as well be from the moon. I would hurry on to my room where I could continue my all-American pursuit of happiness. Dad and I stood, one on each side of Mom, lying on the hospital bed. She was not yet even 40, but she looked much older. For years, she had refused to go to the doctor for the pain inside her that she said was no big deal. By the time an ambulance finally carried her in, the cancer had spread far beyond the limits of surgery. My mind was not in the room. It was the middle of on-campus recruiting season, and I was focused on resumes, transcripts, and strategically constructed interview schedules 
I schemed about how to lie to the corporate recruiters most effectively so that they'd offer to buy me. I understood intellectually that it was terrible to think about this while your mother lay dying. But that understanding didn't mean I could change how I felt. She was conscious. Dad held her left hand with both of his own. He leaned down to kiss her forehead. He seemed weak and old in a way that startled me. I realized that I knew almost as little about Dad as I did about Mom. Mom smiled at him. I'm fine. She turned to me, still smiling. I know you have to go back to school. Her voice was very weak, and it was difficult to hear her over the hum of the machines picked up to her. Go. Don't worry about me. This is not a big deal. Just do well in school. <coughs> I reached out to touch her hand, because I thought that was what I was supposed to do. I was relieved. I was already thinking about the flight back and the bright California sunshine. She whispered something to Dad. He nodded and left the room. Jack, if... She was caught up in a fit of coughing and could not speak for some time. If I don't make it, don't be too sad and hurt your health. Focus on your life. Just keep that box you have in the attic with you. And every year, a like King Ming, just take it out and think about me. I'll be with you always. Ching Ming was the Chinese festival for the dead. When I was very young, Mom used to write a letter on Ching Ming to her dead parents back in China, telling them the good news about the past year of her life in America. She would read the letter out loud to me, and if I made a comment about something, she would write it down in the letter, too. Then she would fold the letter into a paper crane and release it facing west. We would then watch as the crane flapped its crisp wings on its long journey west toward the Pacific, toward China, toward the graves of Mom's family. It had been many years since I last did that with her. I don't know anything about the Chinese calendar. Just rest, Mom. Just keep the box with you and open it once in a while. Just open... She began to cough again. It's okay, Mom. I stroked her arm awkwardly. This is your part, do I? Haizi, Mama Ai Ni. Her cough took over again. An image from years ago flashed into my memory. Mom saying, I, and then putting her hand over her heart. All right, Mom. Stop talking. Dad came back, and I said that I needed to get to the airport early because I didn't want to miss my flight. She died when my plane was somewhere over Nevada. Dad aged rapidly after Mom died. The house was too big for him and had to be sold. My girlfriend Susan and I went to help him pack and clean the place. Susan found the shoebox in the attic, the paper menagerie, hidden in the uninsulated darkness of the attic for so long, had become brittle and the bright wrapping paper patterns had faded. I've never seen origami like this. Your mom was an amazing artist. The paper animals did not move. Perhaps whatever magic had animated them stopped when mom died. Or perhaps I had only imagined that those paper constructions were once alive. The memory of children could not be trusted. It was the first weekend in April, two years after mom's death. Susan was out of town on one of her endless trips as a management consultant, and I was home, lazily flipping through the TV channels. I paused at a documentary about sharks. Suddenly I saw, in my mind, 
mom's hands as they folded and refolded tinfoil to make a shark for me while Lao Hu and I watched a rustle. I looked up and saw that a ball of wrapping paper and torn tape was on the floor next to the bookshelf. I walked over to pick it up. The ball of paper shifted, unfurled itself, and I saw that it was Lao Hu, who I hadn't thought about in a very long time. Rosa! Mom must have put him back together after I had given up. He was smaller than I remembered. Or maybe it was just that back then my fists were smaller. Susan had put the paper animals around our apartment as decoration. She probably left Lao Hu in a pretty hidden corner because he looked so shabby. I sat down on the floor and reached out a finger. Lao Hu's tail twitched and he pounced playfully. I laughed, stroking his back. Lao Hu purred under my hand. How have you been, old buddy? Lao Hu stopped playing. He got up, jumped with feline grace into my lap, and proceeded to unfold himself. In my lap was a square of creased wrapping paper, the plain side up. It was filled with dense Chinese characters. I had never learned to read Chinese, but I knew the characters were sun, and they were at the top, where you'd expect them in a letter addressed to you, written in mom's awkward childish handwriting. I went to the computer to check the internet. Today was King Ming. Oh. I took the letter with me downtown, where I knew the Chinese tour buses stopped. I stopped every tourist asking, Can you read Chinese? I hadn't spoken Chinese in so long that I wasn't sure if they understood. A young woman agreed to help. We sat down on a bench together, and she read the letter to me aloud. The language that I had tried to forget for years came back, and I felt the words sinking into me, through my skin, through my bones, until they squeezed tight around my heart. Son, we haven't talked in a long time. You are so angry when I try to touch you that I'm afraid. And I think maybe this pain I feel all the time now is something serious. So I decided to write to you. I'm going to write in the paper animals that I made for you that you used to like so much. The animals will stop moving when I stop breathing. But if I write to you with all my heart, I'll leave a little of myself behind on this paper in these words. Then, if you think to me on Qingming, when the spirits of the departed are allowed to visit their families, you'll make the parts of myself I leave behind come alive, too. The creatures I made for you will again leap and run and pounce, and maybe you'll get to see these words then. Because I have to write with all my heart, I need to write to you in Chinese. All this time, I still haven't told you the story of my life. When you were little, I'd always thought I'd tell you the story when you were older, so you could understand. But somehow, that chance never came up. I was born in 1957 in Sigulu Village, Hebei Province. Your grandparents were both from very poor peasant families with few relatives. Only a few years after I was born, the Great Famine struck China, during which 30 million people died. The first memory I have was waking up to see my mother eating dirt so that she could fill her belly and leave the last bit of flour for me. Things got better after that. Sigulu is famous for its sezi paper craft, and my mom taught me how to make paper animals and give them life. This was practical art in the life of the village. We made paper birds to chase grasshoppers away from the fields and paper tigers to keep away the mice. For Chinese New Year, my friends and I made red paper dragons. I'll never forget the sight of all those little dragons zooming across the sky overhead, 
holding up strings of exploding firecrackers to scare away all the bad memories of the past year. You would have loved it. Then came the Cultural Revolution in 1966. Neighbor turned on neighbor, brother against brother. Someone remembered that my mother's brother, my uncle, had left for Hong Kong back in 1946 and became a merchant there. Having a relative in Hong Kong meant we were spies and enemies of the people, and we had to be struggled against in every way. Your poor grandmother, she couldn't take the abuse, but threw herself down a well. Then some boys with hunting muskets dragged your grandfather away one day into the woods, and he never came back. There I was, a ten-year-old orphan. The only relative I had in the world was my uncle in Hong Kong. I snuck away one night and climbed onto a freight train going south. Down in Guadang province a few days later, some men caught me stealing food from a field. When they heard that I was trying to get to Hong Kong, they laughed. It's your lucky day. Our trade is to bring girls to Hong Kong. They hid me in the bottom of a trunk along with other girls and smuggled us across the border. We were taken to a basement and told to stand up and look healthy and intelligent for the buyers. Families paid the warehouse a fee and came by to look us over and select one of us to adopt. The Chin family picked me to take care of their two boys. I got up every morning at four to prepare breakfast. I fed and bathed the boys. I shopped for food. I did the laundry and swept the floors. I followed the boys around and did their bidding. At night, I was locked into a cupboard in the kitchen to sleep. If I was slow or did anything wrong, I was beaten. If the boys did anything wrong, I was beaten. If I was caught trying to learn English, I was beaten. Why do you want to learn English? Mr. Chin asked. You want to go to the police? Well, tell the police that you are a mainlander illegally in Hong Kong. They'd love to have you in their prison. Six years, I lived like this. One day, an old woman who sold fish to me in the morning market pulled me aside. I know girls like you. How old are you now? Sixteen? One day, the man who owns you will get drunk, and he'll look at you and pull you to him, and you can't stop him. The wife will find out, and then you will really think you've gone to hell. You have to get out of this life. I know someone who can help. She told me about American men who wanted Asian wives. If I can cook, clean, and take care of my American husband, he'll give me a good life. It was the only hope I had. And that was how I got into the catalog with all those lies and met your father. It is not a very romantic story, but it is my story. In the suburbs of Connecticut, I was lonely. Your father was kind and gentle with me, and I was very grateful to him. But no one understood me, and I understood nothing. But then you were born. I was so happy when I looked into your face and saw shades of my mother, my father, and myself. I had lost my entire family, all of Sigulu, everything I had ever knew and loved. But there you were, and your face was proof that they were real. I hadn't made them up. Now I had someone to talk to. I would teach you my language, and we could together remake a small piece of everything that I loved and lost. When you said your first words to me, in Chinese that had the same accent as my mother and me, I cried for hours. When I made the first Zezi animals for you and you laughed, I felt there were no worries in the world. You grew up a little, and now you could even help your father and me talk to each other. I was really at home now. I finally found a good life. I wished my parents could be here so that I could cook for them and give them a good life too. But my parents were no longer around. 
You know what the Chinese think is the saddest feeling in the world? It's for a child to finally grow with the desire to take care of his parents, only to realize that they were long gone. Son, I know that you do not like your Chinese eyes, which are my eyes. I know that you do not like your Chinese hair, which is my hair. But can you understand how much joy your very existence brought to me? And can you understand how it felt when you stopped talking to me and won't let me talk to you in Chinese? I felt I was losing everything all over again. Why won't you talk to me, son? The pain makes it hard to write. The young woman handed the paper back to me. I could not bear to look into her eyes. Without looking up, I asked for her help in tracing out the character for I on the paper below Mom's letter. I wrote the character again and again on the paper, intertwining my pen strokes with her words. The young woman reached out and put a hand on my shoulder. Then she got up and left leaving me alone with my mother. Following the creases, I refolded the paper back into Lao Hu. I cradled him in the crook of my arm, and as he purred, we began the walk home. The end. Thank you. Well, that was kind of depressing. That was a really good story, but yeah, it was very depressing. And also, I, I also had the yeah, other than people menagerie, what kind of it was sci fi? Sci fi? I was like, up was the most heart wrenching thing I've ever heard. Oh. Yeah, but Stacy. Yep, Stacy joined. Greetings. Oh. Hi. Oh, wow. Jesus has been looking at this. Yeah, I've been focused on story. Story time. I got you. Jesus, so you said the story won three awards. What were they? Drafting. What was that? Yeah, that was the story that won. Uh, what were the three awards the story won? Uh, let's see. The Nebula Award. Hugo Award and the third one. Wait, Tim, you want to play Fuzzy Guy? Let's see. Awesome. Let's see what that's like. The World Fantasy Awards. Wait, what were the first two? The Nebula Award and the Hugo Award. What is the best? That was a good story. I've never done that with those two. Yeah, what is the definition of the Nebula Award? <laughs> What do you mean? It's an award. Like the other awards, they give it out every year. To the yeah, they give it the best. Three awards. Yeah. I thought it was like different. Yeah, so every year those awards go to different categories. Oh. categories. Oh. No, no, separate awards. The old fashioned way. Wait, so I just read it again. It's like it's close to the regular golf. Yeah, now you're working on something. What? Well, here, sounds sucks. Oh, what's wrong with it? Here it is. Oh, nice job. Okay. Two. Two. Oh man, that's not sucks. I think that one's just real loud. Yeah. Oh well. Hey, right, I'm muting my mic now. Is there a place I can just go online? Hey, Zach, come here. Come on, Zach, come here. Yeah, <laughs> this is a chaotic story, huh? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I wanted to get some feedback going. Feedback. 
Look, guys, vertical uh, Jesus. Yes, I am the best. Ah, upside down, Jesus. Dude. <laughs> right. I'm taking it. Holy crap. That was really weird. That's <laughs> wrong. Yep. Yeah, laptops are the best. <laughs> He's pretty dumb. Yeah. yeah. It's about as dumb as it gets. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess I can't really hear what anybody is saying anymore. Oh my god, look, there's a dog. Look at Tony and Bucky. Yeah. Should not expect any contributions to come from our side. We are in a vortex of noise. Now it's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Chapters of it. Spell crash. Spell crash, yeah. Okay, that book was awesome, by the way. I'm sure it would have been way more awesome if I had been there at the beginning. But we started book five in the whole series. Yeah, at least that would have been nice. Why did you the side crash on this string story? That doesn't make any sense. No, spell crash. Spell crash. Why is the side uh, on a laptop, and why is everything blurry? Tony, bring your camera over here and point at Jesus. Yeah, point my camera. Yeah, we'll have yeah, triple, no. Jesus. Have a triple, right. triple Jesus. No! Triple Jesus. Oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> triple doing. Oh, Tony disappeared. No, I'm cool. back. Oh, you're our front-facing okay. camera. Yeah, I need yeah. to switch it around. <laughs> there we go. There are so many me's. <laughs> He's giving you a number and taking away your name. All right, now it's. Oh, yeah, we got a very name. Triple D's. Oh, triple D's. Oh. oh, I don't see. Where's Tony's feed? That's weird. Oh, no, I see Tony's feed. Still here, I think. Yeah, no, we're looking at Jesus. I'm just getting a blank face. Uh, I Jesus hide. Damn it, I need your big, big here so I can hide more effectively. Quadruple Jesus. <laughs> more Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> ah. Oh, wait, I have a beer called Even More Jesus. Yeah, we need to drink it. Right. Time for video feedback. Time for video and audio feed. It's not really working very well. Yeah, it really isn't. Video oh, it's not right in the <laughs> There we go. No, I got it. I got it. Oh, there we go. It's perfect. Oh, my gosh. Recursions. So many recursions. I feel like everyone's getting it. You have to, like, <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, oh, I need to mute my mic so Jesus' mic is done. Yeah. Periodic. 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 
Periodic. Hello! Oh, it's not being back anymore. I have to kind of turn off my microphone. Because it kept switching back between the one that was awesome and less awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, do you, like, do you remember the, uh, the thing that goes to what you're talking about? Yes. Oh, yeah, the speech jammer. Yeah. We tried that. It was fun. Kind of. It, it didn't affect me at all, but it affected some people a little bit. Yeah. Not as much as the video. I tried it too. It's hard to get it to work that well. Yeah. We tried a bunch of different, like, whoa, check it out. Tilt down. Tilt up. Tilt down. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Wow! 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 I don't know. It's not Leonard. It's just the <laughs> Chelsea is puking. Oh. And Stacy is puking too. Oh no. <laughs> Story time is not held liable for any of the above following conditions that may occur, including puking and. Wait, Frank, do you have your. Uh, <laughs> also, I'm not a lawyer. I think that covers everything. I anal as well. Oh yeah. This is this will never be removed from the internet. Oh never mind. That's how I got it. That's right. You ever make something that awesome? Dude, check out all these styles. Like the whole thing, like rapping and Yeah, this right so Yeah. Bengals. How's that angle? Alright, I'm getting another beer. Who wants a beer? I want one. Anybody? Anybody here? We're gonna watch Taken. I was kidding. I'm getting a shot. Perfect. Anyway, Tony's probably not gonna possibly. I need to get back to work. Something Well, thanks. Should we finish story time? It's pretty uh, clearly finished. Alright. Yes. We have so many people. <laughs> Thank you for that. I know. Let's Right. This is great. This is the most people that's been in a while. Yep. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people here too. Uh, I need an opinion. What would make this look more like half rhino, half buffalo? What? Have you been doing this the whole time? <laughs> Wait, why isn't it wallowing in soy sauce? Well, because it's difficult to draw. Were you doing this the whole time? Yeah. It's supposed to be half a rhino and half a buffalo. Yeah, that's really good. You should scan that in. Yeah, it works pretty well. That's not I feedback. Like, I like the goatee. It's a nice mm. touch. Oh, it might be acceptable. 
Okay, so that's what you're doing the whole time. That's funny. <laughs> I was wondering if you were like paying attention or working. I was paying attention. I was wondering if like Kelsey, like Kelsey kept turning invisible. And Tony was like super dark. Oh god, I go. I go. Dude, I have the camera air. I go. 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 Muted the whole time. Oh, well, my mic is not muted now. But oh, who's still talking? Oh, Stacy's up there. I'm not muted. So you're echoing. I'm not making a creepy noise. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I yeah, I guess we're down with story time. I did Jesus. Yeah, you know, can I see your buffalo rhino again? Yes. I'm not 100% says. I'm ready for it to become like not shitty low resolution. Oh, that's yeah, pretty good. No, no, I think it's good. Oh, God. It definitely mm. tastes like a buffalo. So yeah. it was. I don't know if I want like I went with like water buffalo horns. I think maybe I want American buffalo horns. <laughs> but I can't change it now. I have to do another one. Well, I suppose we should uh, do things. Yeah, it's been fun, everybody. Going to head out. Should have joined us in Boulder, and then the party would never have to end. But I can't. All right, Fiona is forgiven. No deal. Yes, where's everyone else? Like Tony, jeez. Dude, I have fucking camera here. I have to restore my phone or something. Tony, why are you in Boulder? Because I am a fucking slacker. All right. See you everybody next week. Thank you. Yeah, you should have Boulder. I know. Next year, man. It'll be a lot of fun to be going to Boulder, Tony.